Okay, our next talk is going to be about cooperative per perception of future cars with GNU Radio, and Augustus Vega is going to tell us about this. Hey, thank you. So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Augusto Vega. I am a researcher at IBM TJ Watson in New York. Uh, it's my, my first time at FOSM. I am finding this really exciting. Uh, as far as I have seen, uh, the talks are quite technical, so I don't know if I will be that technical, so hopefully you will still find something of interest today. Uh, this is uh, about a cool uh, project that we are uh, doing in the context of, in general, uh, connected to what Dr. Better was uh, referring to before, heterogeneous chips, heterogeneous, heterogeneous architectures, but I will talk about the application that in our case is driving that, which is cooperative perception in connected autonomous cars using radio. So very quickly, thank you very much to all the people involved in this project, my IBM colleagues, as well as you, our university partners, uh, in particular students, postdocs, who are doing uh, amazing work. Also, thank you to doc Dr. Tom Rondo, who is the program manager of the uh, DARPA DSOC program, under which we are uh, doing this, this work. So uh, the talk will be uh, organized in, in this way. I will start very briefly describing this EPOCS project that we are at IBM leading with the university partners and, and um, uh, a little bit about, I mean, the, the, this new era of heterogeneous uh, chips, right? And then I will go from that uh, broad, uh, let's say, a concept to more specific into one piece of that project, which is this EPOCS reference application, or ERA, which is about cooperative perception in, in, in vehicles. And then I will focus on something even more specific, which is one element in that application, which is the AO 2.11P DSRC transceiver uh, within ERA, and some uh, optimization and acceleration opportunities that we have uh, identified so far. Right. So let's start uh, saying that in 2018, DARPA started this program called uh, Domain Specific System on a Chip, the SOC, right? which uh, Ultimate goal is to develop a methodology that allows us to build heterogeneous chips uh, very fast for an application uh, domain of interest. In this case, when we say a domain is not just a single application, it's more than that. Actually, we talk about the super domain of embedded processor for autonomous connected cars in our specific epochs project. Uh, more specifically, we, we say uh, that uh, that application is uh, for cooperative perception, including elements that uh, come from the domain of computer vision and as well as software defined radio. This is why we talk about a domain and not one single application. So what is cooperative perception? First of all, um, this is not a term that we have invented, right? Um, many car makers are talking about this today, but the idea is, is simply, I mean, the way automakers have been evolving, advancing cars, connected autonomous cars so far, is by making a car as intelligent and, and powerful as possible by putting more sophisticated sensors and more uh, capable uh, computation engines on board, right? We try to make the car, uh, let's say, self-sufficient, right? But uh, still there are some limitations uh, to that approach. For example, I like this, this simple example, right? There is a car trying to do object recognition and the car uh, correctly detects two other cars in front of it, but it also detecting some bicycles and also a person. But if we look carefully, these are just uh, a decal, which is a stick to the back of the car in front of me, right? This is a misclassification problem, uh, pretty common in, in, in vehicles today. So um, clearly, if we keep doing a car very, very powerful, uh, there may be still some of uh, these problems that, uh, I mean, we, we need to think a little bit harder how to, how to fix. So what we like to study, or let's say to propose, is this complementary approach of a multi-vehicle cooperative perception where cars can uh, very closely interact with each other, right? In addition to doing its own stuff, a car can interact with each other to resolve, for example, this kind of uh, ambiguities in real time while they are driving uh, an environment, right? Um, specifically, what we have in mind in, in, as part of this project initially is relatively simple. We want a car to create a representation of the war, right, in this context, in the form of two-dimensional occupancy maps. A car will create these 2D occupancy maps with information about the presence or absence of uh, obstacles in the surroundings. And these cars will exchange this map in real time, right, and will 
more, more interestingly, will fuse all these maps together. I mean, a car will have its own representation of the surrounding and will receive other maps from other cars. And we'll try to fuse all these maps together to have a more precise, more accurate, uh, um, let's say, vision of the world, right? So this is what we are doing right now in the current version of uh, the open source application that I will introduce. But in the longer term, what we want to explore is something that we call uh, uh, adaptive swarm intelligence. It's more like a more, more, more swarming, more, uh, um, more complex than just exchanging plain raw data. We want cars to eventually learn from each other, right? Exchange knowledge, right? Things of, of that sort. But uh, in general, what we believe is that uh, the number of false predictions while a car is driving can be uh, significantly lower by, pro uh, by uh, benefiting from this swarm-based cooperative approaches compared to the car-centric only approach that, uh, let's say, car manufacturers are, are following today, basically. So this is the motivation of um, why we started building this application. So let me very quickly say two words about the, the EPOX project, uh, which is our uh, IBM-led, uh, let's say, solution for the design challenge presented by, by DARPA's DSOC program. So as I said, it's not just about the application, it's about the methodology uh, that will take uh, an application uh, domain of interest, in our case, from the domain of connected autonomous vehicles. And um, it, it involves, let's say, a series of steps to generate the uh, underlying SOC, heterogeneous SOC, that we need to execute that application while meeting some metrics, performance, throughput, power efficiency of interest, right? So it's about the methodology, and there are many uh, steps involved. Um, we are developing an, an advanced uh, compiler as well as uh, a scheduler. We are also uh, studying some uh, mathematically grounded ontology uh, generation uh, uh, mechanisms to more or less automatically identify what are the pieces of your application that are worth being accelerated in hardware, right? Instead of doing that like a brute force as we usually do, we need something that is more mathematically grounded, right? So this is the ontology generation part. Then we have uh, more hardware-related steps, for example, the design of uh, accelerators, NOC, memory architecture for uh, that specific, for the hypothesis generated by the ontology. So the ontology tells, well, these are the kind of uh, part of the software that you should accelerate, so then we need to uh, determine what accelerators we need, how do we connect them, and what kind of memory system we have to put. Then we implement. Yeah? Initially, implementation in our case is just FPGA prototyping, but we need to also uh, tape out this chip at least a couple of times to generate the final SOC. So Epox is about the methodology, but today I will just focus on the application, right? Um, also to give you a little bit uh, of context, this is something actually that uh, Dr. Better presented in his presentation before. Uh, this is the full stack that is being uh, addressed as part of the DSOC program. Uh, this presentation is just about the application, right? Later on today, I will be presenting something about the scheduler also, and I will be touching this other layer here, the operating system. So let's go into the interesting part, the Epoch's reference application, or ERA. So ERA is an open source application available in GitHub uh, for, that basically implements this uh, idea of cooperative perception in connected autonomous cars. And there are two important parts in ERA. One is the communication fabric, and the other is the sensing fabric. So communication fabric, as you can imagine, is all about communication, in this case, between vehicles, vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, B2B, using um, DSRC uh, new ray implementation of the AO 2.11p protocol. So that is the top box in this diagram. And then we have the sensing fabric, which is about collecting sensor data from the sensors in the car, right? and generating this uh, representation of the surrounding, which in the current version of ERA is a two-dimensional two -dimensional occupancy grid map, right? So then these two things uh, work very closely because in this way we allow a car to generate its own map and receive other maps from other nearby cars and fuse all this map together in real time to have a better vision of the surrounding, right? So this is a, a idea in very general terms. So ERA in, uh, involves Multimodal sensing, although today mostly is um, a camera uh, sensors, uh, it involves the uh, generation of local occupancy grid maps. It involves DSRC-based vehicle-to-vehicle communication, and final real-time fusion of those maps. 
So uh, in the current version of ERA, version 2, available in GitHub, we are using um, a simulator called Gazebo. I don't know how many of you are familiar or know uh, Gazebo. Raise your hands. OK, so Gazebo is a pretty detailed physical simulator for robotics environments. So this is what we are using in the current version to uh, simulate an automotive scenario, although our cars in this case are robots. And our streets in this current version is just a simple 3D war where this robot move around, basically. We will change this in a future version of ERA. So we have a gazebo where we have this robot with these depth cameras attached, collecting uh, information from the, uh, from the war, right? So this is our war simulator. Then we have a block called cosmap 2 d which uh, is part of uh, the robot operating system, ROS. How many of you are aware of ROS? A little bit more. OK, we are getting close. So ROS is uh, it's not, a, it's not an operating system by itself, actually. It's just a robotics uh, uh, software infrastructure that provides many uh, libraries for, for to build very quickly robotics applications. So we are using one of its available modules, which is a cosmap 2 d block, which allows us to uh, generate these two-dimensional occupancy maps from data collected from the depth camera in the robot. So we generate in real time, many times per second, these 2D maps. And then, uh, uh, by the way, I mean, it's not just about the, the, the 2D map. It's not just about the presence or absence of blocks. It's also about uh, what those um, obstacles are. So we, have, we, we also do object recognition, right? We want to label also those blocks. It's not just, OK, there is something there, but we want to know that if there is another car or a pedestrian or a tree or whatever, right? Then we take that and we pack it, uh, we serialize it, and we inject it in uh, our uh, new radio uh, transceiver, which, by the way, is, this is an open source implementation by Bastian Roessel. I think 99% of you know Bastian very well. Uh, so we took uh, Bastian's implementation of the AO2.11 P transceiver, and we integrated that into uh, ERA. So we are, this is why, uh, where we are using a new radio. And this is interesting to mention that uh, we have like two disparate wars coexisting here, which is new radio and more uh, ROS uh, gazebo, right? So we had to build like a ROS new radio interface to allow these two uh, wars to, to uh, coexist, right? So I think that that was something pretty interesting. And finally, we, uh, we will also receive other maps from other cars through the new radio receiver. So what we want to do is to unpack that map and to merge together, to fuse together the locally generated one with the remotely received ones and, and provide uh, the final version. This happens several times per second, by the way. It's very CPU intensive, right? Uh, there are two ways to execute uh, ERA today. One is uh, two computer setup, where you take ERA and you deploy it in two different computers, and you have over the air communication between both of them. For that, you need, of course, USRP devices. Um, so the other easy, easiest, easier way to execute the array is in a standalone mode, hmm, where the two, let's say, instances of ERA, um, of ERA run in the same physical computer, so the communication between both of them uh, will be using a regular uh, network socket, right? But functionality-wise, this is the same as uh, having over there communication, right? So probably this is the, the easiest uh, setup to start with. So now let me go into uh, a little bit uh, some characterization that we conducted on the transceiver of ERA uh, and some optimization op opportunities that we have identified that may be of interest. So um, as I said before, ERA has uh, several components. I will be focusing now on that uh, box there, the vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication part, which is actually the AO 2.11P new radio transceiver that we took from, from Bastian, right? So when you take a software that you don't know and you want to identify uh, acceleration opportunities, what is the first thing you usually do? Well, you characterize the application on a well-known system. So we took this transceiver, we executed it on uh, some, some machine, right? And we start measuring the amount of uh, computation cycles taken by different parts of, of the, in this case, of this flow graph, right? 
Uh, so what we observe, the very first CAT performance analysis, is that there are actually like two functions, new radio functions, that are uh, consuming most of the CPU cycles. These are um, the complex exponent flo floating point function, which takes more than 30% per percent of the execution time in this current implementation. And the other one is the computation of the uh, Viterbi butterfly, which is a little bit more than 10% of the overall execution time. So we say, OK, we have two candidates to optimize. Let's just start with these two. And by the way, what, what are the parts in, in this flow graph that are making use of those two functions? And we identified these four uh, blocks, uh, which is uh, packet decoding, uh, OFDM equalizer, and synchronization, long and short. So these are the ones that are highlighted in red. These are the blocks that are making use of these two functions most of the time. And actually, the four of them belong to the receiver, which means that, well, the receiver is more critical, clearly it's more critical than the, than the transmitter, right? Um, so OK, we started with these two functions. Let's see how we can accelerate them and how much benefit we can get in return. So the first thing we did is, OK, we defined a CPU a baseline, which in this case is a general purpose a CPU, an ARM Core A53 <coughs> processor, very, very basic stuff. And we measure, this is just for one of these two functions, for the complex exponent uh, function. We measure, on average, how many cycles it takes to call that function. And in this case, it was around 37 CPU cycles, on average, for the execution of this complex exponent uh, function, right? OK, so uh, we move forward. We say, OK, let's, let's design our own. Uh, preliminary accelera acceleration engine for this function. And the way this function works is very simple, actually. I mean, it, the, the computation of the complex exponent is a computation of, a, of an exponent multiplied by this cosine and, and sine elements there. So we say, OK, let's, let this, let's design a, a dual uh, path a pipeline where one part of the pipeline, the, the bottom one, will compute this piece. The top one will compute the cosine and sign and add them together. And at the end, we will multiply to generate the final result. So this was our very first uh, version of our accelerator, right? Very simple one at the beginning. We had some issues that we had to, to, to deal with, like, for example, unbalancing between these two paths that we, we, uh, we managed to fix. So we start measuring uh, the, 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 the execution time of this function using that accelerator. As expected, we managed to go down from 37 to around seven CPU uh, cycles per, per call, right? Which was a huge improvement. Of course, since this accelerator is, uh, let's say, uh, outside of the CPU, then we start having some memory copy overhead, right? We have to move the input data from the CPU into the accelerator and then move back the result again into the CPU, right? So this is our, uh, let's say, first version, not very much optimized of the accelerator. Then we decided to try something also relatively uh, straightforward. We say, OK, let's try to use a vectorized version of this function, right? And voila, the vectorized version took even less cycles than the accelerator, right? <laughs> so uh, around five or six cycles. So that was actually very interesting. Say, OK, we, are not, we don't have to move data because this happened on the same uh, CPU, on the same core, and it still performs better than our uh, accelerator, right? But our accelerator was not very well optimized at the very beginning, so we start looking into some more aggressive optimizations. And what, what we realized is that, OK, I mean, in this case, the accelerator was running at 100 megahertz, right? So uh, to be conservative, say, how much we can increase that frequency? Well, we can go up to 300 megahertz without violating timing and things of that sort, which uh, will provide us like three times uh, speed up, right? Plus, we can have for the, the the, the silent, board, silent board that we are using, we can have up to four copies of this accelerator running in parallel. So we have uh, another four times uh, speed up. And the most important thing is that we believe we can eliminate the memory copy overhead because the memory copy overhead here is mostly due to the way virtual memory in new radio buffers is mapped to physical memory, right? So that mapping is changing all the, all the time in radio, and therefore force us to uh, keep copying uh, data from one physical location to the new physical location where the, the buffer is mapped to now, because the, the buffer is actually rotating, right? If we 
could go get, get into a new radio and fix that, uh, then we could eventually eliminate, ideally eliminate that m extra memory copy overhead. And the result would be like uh, each call of this function using this fully optimized version of a celerator is around one, one cycle per call, right? So significant uh, performance improvement, right? Let me very quickly, because I am also uh, arriving to the end of the time, but let me also quickly tell you what, what are our plans for ERA, because we need help, right? <laughs> and we think this is very exciting, yeah? connected autonomous cars. Who doesn't want to work on connected autonomous cars? Right? Uh, don't, don't, don't answer. <laughs> so uh, the current version of ERA is version 2, available in GitHub, as I said, the one that supports this two computer setup. We are going into version three of ERA, where we will replace Gazebo with a more realistic automotive simulator em emulator, like for example, CarSim or, or Carla. Um, this is something we are trying to decide, right? But more importantly, this part of this diagram here, layer one and layer two, is what we have today in terms of software platform for automotive. We have very good war simulators, CarSim, well, Gazebo can be used for automotive too. Carla and LG SBL are some examples. We have very good automotive platform to implement perception, plan, and control in simulated environments or in real cars, right? But we don't have that piece there that enables vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication in this existing software ecosystem. So this is what we want to provide with ERA version 3. We want to create... Hmm, the missing part here, which can interact with layer two and layer one, and if a user wants to have, in a very easy manner, support for vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, regardless if she or he is using, let's say, CarSim plus Apollo or Carla plus AutoWare, right? So this is what we have in mind for ERA version three. ERA will be only intended to enable cooperative automotive with support for DSRC, currently supported, and eventually in the future 5G, right? So this is what will make ERA unique, right? And we need help for that. So uh, to wrap up, I, I think uh, we, 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 all, we, we, we all agree that the domain-specific heterogeneous SOC ERA is here based on some talks that we have already seen. This is because we need to significantly improve performance throughput as well as power efficiency. DARPA understand, understands that very well, and this is why one of uh, uh, its programs, the SOC, is uh, about S heterogeneous SOC. So under the SOC, we are developing this open source application called ERA for multi-vehicle cooperative perception that includes, as I said, local sensing plus vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communications in the same application. In other words, ROS, the robot operating system, and new radio co can coexist together uh, if, uh, uh, at least based on, on our experience, right? The SRC be, plays a critical role for vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, right? If we want to have a world where cars can interact with each other and swarm between them to exchange not only raw data but also, let's say, knowledge experience, then we have to focus on how those cars will communicate in real time, right? High throughput, low latency, right? So we have to put a focus on how do we accelerate that. And finally... As I said, we want to turn ERA into a benchmark for cooperative mobility that can be easily plugged into existing automotive platforms. So if you want to collaborate, please reach out to us, to me. Check out ERA in, in GitHub too. So that's it. Uh, I don't know if there are questions. So the question was, uh, first part was if we are considering autopilot um, when, when, when we talk about ERA version 3. I think the question is, uh, in, this, in this figure, are, do you have a box that is autopilot too, right, in addition to Apollo or AutoWare, right? So, um, uh, I mean, the, the way we want to, to, to build ERA version 3 is independent of 
anything else. We want to actually define some APIs that can work with eventually any uh, other infrastructure, let's say Apollo, AutoWare, Autopilot, or whatever, right? So uh, should be extensible in that, in that regard. So yeah, I mean, the answer is yes. In the future, we, we can also include Autopilot in this, uh, in this diagram. And the, the other part was about the, the communication, the protocol between, between cars. Uh, that is actually a very key question, right? And it's something that we are investigating as part of this project, right? How do cars communicate to each other? For now, it's just uh, we, we take these maps, we pack them, we compress them, we serialize them, and we exchange them in a very simple manner. But we need to define a protocol, and MapLink may be, may be uh, one, one option. Um, yeah, so. I've got one really quick question. Yeah. How big are the buffers you're copying in and out of your accelerator? Uh, you mean the, the buffers in between uh, new radio blocks? How big is the GNU radio buffer feeding and taking data from your accelerator? Uh, I don't remember the number. Let me check well, it out. Yeah, I'm curious. What yeah, the yeah, is. yeah, because that changed many, many times already. But I mean, uh, it's going to depend on how Yes, 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 yes. yes. Let, let, me check, let me check that number. So. I think there is one more. Megabytes or uh, It is in the order of the kilobytes. Okay, yes, kilobyte. yes, yes, kilobytes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, security is key here. Actually, something I didn't mention, we are also moving from ROS1 to ROS2 because ROS2 provides some security features that we will leverage in ERA version 3. Uh, but uh, uh, we, we believe that, in general, swarming can help us to identify like um, some, uh, let's say, advers adversarial cars in, in, your, in your swarm, right? For, by, for example, running some real-time consensus mechanism in real time, the cars can say, well, that guy here is it's been wrong, all right? So uh, we should probably take him out from our swarm right now. So, but it's, it's a very key part. DARPA is very interested in that, IBM also, so we are looking into that. Uh, and we, I don't have an answer, but uh, swarming may be uh, probably one of the ways.